Could you please stand? I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that, that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Please be seated. Thank you, children. Appreciate it. Thanks, Janice. Thanks, Wendy. Susan and Bob have been wonderful supporters of our preschool, and uh, Bob asked if some of the children could sing this morning, and what a blessing to have those innocent voices and a reminder that life is a gift and life goes on through Jesus Christ. Please bow with me in prayer. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death, and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your servant Susan, being raised with Christ, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Psalm 23, and all the readings can be found in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us read together Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your helper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth 
forevermore. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Revelation. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my child. How 
Could you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. This is not easy. It all started over 60 years ago. I received a phone call from my mother. My family was, was having a celebration at the homestead, <clears throat> which is a resort in Virginia. Some of you are familiar with it and some of you aren't. And it, my family was going, I was at school at Washington and Lee, and, and my family was going to go to the <clears throat> homestead and have a reunion. And they wanted me to attend. And I had been in the Navy and have, was back at school, and I was trying to figure out uh, what to do. And, and then all of a sudden, right next to me, this fellow comes around and says, Susan Martin is home. And I thought, does Susan Martin remember me? And he said, well, she said that she enjoyed seeing you several years ago when you were here, when you were in the Navy. So I got on the phone, I called Susan Martin, and she answered the phone. And I made a date for her to attend with us at the homestead for a family reunion where we had about three or four suites my, my father was a doctor there, and he filled in for the doctor's hot springs where the homestead was. So Susan, on our first date, this was over 60 years ago, uh, came to the homestead and saw the whole Hawkins family, from, from the oldsters to the youngsters. Three or four of the uh, people who were there uh, were, were so, so, so aged that they couldn't move and we had a wonderful time. And some things happened at that service, or not service, the weekend. <clears throat> some things happened that I should have known, uh, I should have known then that, that, that my life was, was set, right? Because Su Susan and my mother uh, got along very well, right? Uh, those of you who have been to the homestead uh, know that like a lot of resorts, there's an area there where they have a lot of shops and, and you walk through the area and, and you look at the things there and you might buy something that's highly overpriced and you might just look and go on, right? Well, Susan and my mother got together and, and they became very close friends at that time. And I thought that Susan was looking for something for me to buy her. Uh, I stayed behind them roughly, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 yards. And I heard my mother say to Susan, I cannot say anything more to you all weekend because if Bobby thinks I like you, uh, he will never call you again. Right? <laughs> and that's how it all got started, right? Uh, and, and we were uh, married about a few years later and it, we have had a wonderful, wonderful time and we've had a very worthwhile wedding and, and Susan, where, where you are now, right, we miss you, and I hope that you're with my mother. Because after that, for, for, the, for the next 50 years, Susan said to me, when I get married, I want to get married, and I want to be at the cemetery next to your mother. And believe me, that no one can be happier than to have the two people that are closest to you in your life care as much for each other as Susan and my mother. Now, I told you, I, I didn't realize what had happened until several years later. 
Uh, I think it was probably when mom sold the house and, and, uh, and I, I, I kept after Susan and Susan was acting sort of funny. And, and, and then I realized, you know, when most of us get married, you expect to be number one uh, in, in the eyes of the person you married. I was not number one. Uh, I was not number two. Uh, religion was number two. Susan was very strong in her feeling for Christ and Jesus and the religion. Right? And I was not even number three. Right? The number three was the piano. Right? Uh, this thing here has guided our life for about 50, 60 years. Right? And I didn't realize that at first. Uh, and about 20 years later, I was not, I was, num I was, I became number four. Uh, there's this little white ball called golf, right? And that became, became more important to her than to me, that, right? So I learned to live, right, where I was, was uh, positioned in a certain place in, in her life, right? And I enjoy, enjoyed every minute of it, right? I didn't realize all this had happened it had really happened at the homestead when we got started because Susan was the only girl that I took home from college to visit my parents who played the piano. And my mother played the piano. And, and they, was, they would spend not hours, but a half hour, 45 minutes, mom would sit and listen to Susan playing the piano. And I thought that was the dullest thing, right? Right? And throughout Susan's life and, and our life together, the piano has been a very strong instrument and, and a very valuable tool for us both. Right? Uh, Susan tried to teach me at one time. Right? Uh, it, it really didn't work. Uh, when she was here at St. Luke's, uh, she started a, a choir. And there were not enough voices in the choir, so she convinced me that I should join the choir. After a while, I joined the choir. Uh, after about two months, she came to me and said, Bob, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> huh? I, had, I had learned that, that when, you, when you don't sing well, you better get next to someone who does. So when, when I, I would always get next to the ba a bass who sang the first note and then I gathered the second note, right? And, and, uh, and I think that that choir did, did very well and, and St. Luke's has not had much better music right until Greg came along and, and decided that he was gonna play the guitar, right? Uh, but that, that the choir and the children were big in Susan's life the church was big in Susan's life, and, and we hope that the Lord will be big in her life. Right? Uh, I could go through over and over again a few more things I have here, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Right? Uh, the, one, of the things that <laughs> one of the things that Susan did, uh, we, we traveled a lot. There, there, there was a period in, in our life when we... Uh, we traveled quite a bit around, uh, and, and there's some, so I think there's a sentence or two about it in, in the bulletin. Right? And, and um, one of the places that I wanted to go that Susan wouldn't go was Beirut, Lebanon. And this was, was uh, when Eisenhower was president and things were calm, and, right? and, but she wasn't sure about that. And Susan was never one to, uh, she was, was, was not adventurous. Right? I, I tricked her into uh, taking a, a balloon trip with me uh, and I tricked her with a, a, a glider, right? Uh, and she got me back uh, because she knew that I wanted to, to uh, skydive. And I had made arrangements to go skydive and, and, uh, and unbeknownst to me, right, the whole thing was canceled because Susan had told them that I wouldn't be able to come. Right? But in, in any case, the, the, the um, the, the one time that Susan was the most supportive of me, and it is the one time when it, the thing that, one of the biggest things that happened to our lives on this world, on this world, was our move to Hilton Head, All right? We lived in Philadelphia, we lived right outside of Philadelphia, and I had a good job, and the company was doing well, 
we had two little kids, Carmen and Johnny, and, uh, and Preston. Carmen married Johnny, incidentally. He stays in my mind, too. But uh, we, we uh, were, everything was just running just well, and I walked in one day, and I said, I'm moving to Hilton Head. And the world might have come to an end. My mother called me, Susan's mother called me, everybody, we, you're doing what? Right? You have a good job, you're raising a family, you got things going well, and you're picking up and going to some island. Well, I had been to Hilton Head before and had bought property here, all right, and sold it within a uh, couple months. But I wanted to move, and I learned that if, if you don't live where you enjoy, what is life all about? There are too many wonderful places in this world that we can go to and enjoy living and enjoy participating. So we, we came to Hilton Head, and Susan was the only person, the only person who said to me, all right, I think we're, we're, we're going to do the right thing. Uh, we moved down here at, at, in, in 1977. Uh, we rented a house from John Jakes. John Jakes was a, a, a pretty well-known author from Ohio, and he bought a, a home and they were, were not going to come down here for a, another uh, <clears throat> another year. So we rented a house, and, and then I found a lot, and, and we moved here. And it was a wonderful thing for our children, and it has worked so well for all of us. And right now we love Hilton Head. We love Hilton Head Island, right? And we love the way that, that we have been able to contribute to the growth of Hilton Head over, over the past few years, right? Uh, oh my, how I, I, I can't forget this. The number one, th the one, number one thing that Susan enjoyed in the last five years of her life uh, is the church mouse. Do you know what the church mouse is? Uh, the church mouse is a, is, a, is a place up the road where you buy used clothes, right? And Susan would love to go to the church mouse and Cheryl Christine, who, who played the piano here earlier, and other people drove her right, to the church mouse and they wouldn't tell me. Right? All they wanted was my credit card number. Right? And, and many of you are sitting probably uh, in a church that has been expanded considerably by Susan's contribution at the church mouse. Right? Right? And we see, <laughs> We, we moved about six years ago, and her closet is so full of things that she bought at Church Mouse. And she tells me, hey, Bob, Mom, it, it only cost six dollars, right? And, but it, when I walk through her closet, there are about 30 items in there that she's never worn. The tag is still on it, right? But she would still go and shop and, and, and get the biggest kick out of helping the Church Mouse and using the Church Mouse as, as a a way for to help our church, right? And I, I, I wondered about that, and I wonder now about it some, but the, so what, okay? Uh, I mentioned that, that at a period of time, we did some traveling, and there were, there were two issues, that two, two events when we were traveling a lot, right? Uh, I told you about Beirut, Lebanon, I got off a little bit. Uh, but we went to, we, after some, Really, arm twisting from my standpoint. We went to uh, we went to uh, to Beirut, and we spent a lot of time right, walking around uh, the city and getting a good feel for the the, the way of life uh, in in Beirut. And it was one time we were walking around, and we were about a, a, oh three or four blocks from the downtown area, which was pretty well protected at that time. Uh, and we were walking along a sidewalk, and the, the sidewalks are, the, are very narrow. Uh, the buildings uh, get very close to the street, and you know, I, heard, I heard this hum, 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 and I knew right away what it was. Somebody lived in one of those houses and was driving a Mercedes, and they, and they went flying past us. On, and after they flew past us, and I was watching them, I looked around, and where is Susan? And right across the street, was the lady shop in Beirut, downtown Beirut, Lebanon, right? Susan went over to, to and, and the, the lady running the shop 
I wanted to see who was at the door before they unlock it and let you in. They saw that we were okay. They let us in. And Susan, at that time, then worked with the, the proprietor to develop, to, to buy a dress, right? I got tired of it and I walked out. And when I walked out, I ran straight into this young lady with a microphone. And she had two people behind her with cameras and she turned out that she was representing one of, of the, uh, one of the TV stations in Beirut and they run a, a special on people visiting Beirut, right? And, and she was so glad to see us, right? Uh, this was a, a, a TV station that, that certain hours of the day was English and the rest of the time was Arabic. And so she was talking to me and then Susan walks out and I, I, I feel a push. All right, on my back, and, and one of the cameramen was pushing me out of the way. So for the next 15 minutes, Susan is talking to this, this, this girl about Beirut, right? And I'm pushed all the way out so that I never, I'm never seen, I'm never heard, right? And then, but I, I do have the presence of mind to say, is this gonna be on TV that we can watch it? And, and the, the woman said, yes, this should be on tomorrow morning from a certain time, right? So we went back to our hotel and, and lo and behold, it was on and Susan got the biggest kick out of this thing because it was, it was a 15 or 20 minute uh, discussion between Susan and, and the, the Lebanese girl about why we should visit Beirut, right? Uh, the, other, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you is, is so one, of our, one of our big trips that Susan got the biggest kick out of was to the Sydney Opera, the Sydney Opera House. Many of you have been there before. So we went to, we went to the Sydney Opera House uh, on a trip to Australia, and we went to two or three shows in the Sydney Opera House. And then among other things, they had activities at the, at the Sydney Opera House, uh, in, including a tour of, of the whole Opera House facility. Uh, and and it, it could include a, p, a, piano, uh, a piano tune, a piano tuned and luncheon and so forth. And I convinced Susan that we should go, right? And I said, and I said to her, why don't, you, why don't you talk to the pianist and see if you can participate? And she wouldn't know. And then I talked to the pianist and she said, we would love to have her. So we had lunch at the Opera House, all right, at the Sydney Opera House. And Susan had played two or three times, right, during that luncheon and had the most wonderful time, wonderful time. And then I got back here and our minister said that he had been to Sydney and had walked on the bridge. There's a bridge across the harbor of Sydney that's very high and very well known, right? And I am going to, I'm going to say, all right, Susan, we miss you, we love you, we know you're well. And I'm gonna have Greg, who you, you'll notice on the, the, uh, the uh, bulletin that you have, that Greg, he talks before I do and he talks all after I do. And he did that intentionally so that anything I say, he can answer, well, now you gotta answer this, right? Did you walk across the bridge? Yes. Right? He says he did, but we have no pictures. We have nothing. <laughs> We have no, 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 no word that, that it really happened until somebody else says they went to the Sydney Opera. I'll leave the rest to you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. I'd rather be closer to you all than back there, plus this way I don't have to look at Bob. <laughs> Actually, that's a very comfortable spot for Bob since he spent a lot of time there as the head of the lay readers of St. Luke's. And, uh, it was wonderful to hear his reflections on Susan and what a blessing that she's been to each other through the years and also Carmen and Preston and, and now Johnny and Moira. Um, and uh, I have been blessed by knowing Susan in various ways through the years. First, as a musician here, when I was really a kid in many ways, 31 years ago, and Susan was around and she was uh, playing piano, playing organ. She was here, she was at Self Family Arts. Uh, she was at the Playhouse and uh, got to know Susan in that capacity and Bob uh, through the church. And then as I got to know the two of them, I just basically fell in love. 
I, I love Susan dearly and I love Bob and they have been such a blessing to my life. And uh, one of the things I did say to Susan at one point is, um, and to Bob, I just was so impressed with them as a couple, their commitment to the Lord, their faithfulness in worship. But I said to Bob, how did you get Susan? I mean, you gotta tell me that. Uh, because she was always so elegant and so beautiful and dignified. Uh, she had a grace about her life as she played, as she apparently played golf. Uh, I didn't know that until later. Uh, and she was a musician, an athlete, and a very bright woman. And uh, what most impressed me about Susan, though, was her faith that never stopped growing. Because as she started to withdraw and wasn't able to get out as much and went through some health challenges, we spent time together. Uh, I've probably been to their home over the years a dozen times, a couple dozen times. I don't really remember how many. But Susan and I would uh, talk about her faith and we would talk about what was going on in the world and she was incredibly engaging. And as much as her body was uh, betraying her and she was struggling, her spirit never faded. Her mind never faded. She was a, an incredible person in so many ways and it was a blessing for me. I mean, I would often call Bob and we would figure out the best time for me to come over and Bob, once in a while, was invited to come, but not often, as I recall. Uh, but we would have wonderful conversations, uh, and uh, she would bring up what she was reading lately from the Bible and what was going on in the culture, and, and she would want to talk about it because she wanted to continue to grow in her faith. Uh, one of the blessings that she did have as she was declining and struggling was as much as she loved to travel and she loved to play golf and she loved to be out and about, she loved being able to sit there and to read and to look out her window. I remember her little nook very well and sitting, her, sitting with her there. And the blessing also, she always had coffee for me. I really appreciated that because I'm a coffee lover. And we would sit and chat sometimes an hour, sometimes an hour and a half or two hours and uh, just have a wonderful visit. And uh, she had a tremendous faith. And it's always a blessing for me to do a service for someone in memory of someone who had such a strong faith because there's no doubt in my mind where she is right now. She's with the Lord. And if you listen to the readings that we read this morning from Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, there was no doubt in her mind that that was true for her. The gospel reading, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. She knew that. She trusted in him. The psalm, Psalm 121, that says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from where does my help come from? She knew where her help came from. Her strength came from. Even her dignity amidst some of the struggles that she had. She walked faithfully with the Lord who was her shepherd. Jesus who was and is her savior. And so, Susan, I know where she is. And I know that I will see her again because I trust the Lord. She's trying to let us know she's calling in right now. <laughs> Susan really wanted to grow continually. And so I think of, as she grew, in her faith and her health diminished. What she was looking forward to is the picture that we discovered when reading Revelation this morning. The bride adorned for her bridegroom. That she was ready to be with the Lord. As Bob said, who was number one in her life? And Bob was somewhere down the line. And apparently that changed through the years, Bob. <laughs> But she knew the Lord and walked with the Lord. And when we die and we trust the Lord, life has changed. It doesn't end. And that's the confidence that Susan had as she walked and declined. The last time that I remember being out with Susan, it was actually with Bob and Susan for lunch. And I showed up for lunch and Cheryl was there. And Cheryl, I got to know Cheryl through that. And what a blessing to hear her sing, How Great Thou Art. 
because Susan loved that song as much as she was classically trained and loved the symphony and loved the orchestra and loved classical music. She was diverse in her tastes of music. She even liked my guitar playing, which defies logic. But she loved that hymn, that song, because he was great in her life and even greater now that she's not held back from anything that challenged her physically or emotionally, that she's with the Lord and that we can trust. There's a wonderful picture. Is it going to be available down in the fellowship hall? Carmen? That shows different aspects of Susan's life. And when I saw the picture of her down in the fellowship hall as a bride, I thought, what a wonderful picture as we're going to read Revelation at this point. The bride adorned for her bridegroom, Jesus, who she loved. But there's wonderful pictures of Susan throughout her life as a child, as a debutante, as a mom, and as a wife. And Bob looks incredibly young there, as a matter of fact. But it's a wonderful picture that I invite you to take because it's aspects of Susan's life and wonderful memories. But she's not gone. The memories that we have of Susan live on in our heart, in our mind. The impression of who she was and who she is remains. What's different is she's now with the Lord. So right now we're going through a time of grief, sadness, Susan, in my heart and mind, went suddenly because the last time I saw her, we were able, able to converse until she was in the hospital, in which case she was slipping. And I hold on to the other memories. I encourage you to do that, but we're here to also remember the promises of God in Christ. Susan knew she wasn't perfect. She knew she needed a Savior, and she trusted in the Lord. That's the promise of God in Christ. That's the gift that we celebrate at Christmas time. So in that sense, it's a wonderful time for her to be with the Lord because the Savior was given and she now knows the Savior face to face. She trusted in the strength and power of the Holy Spirit working in her life. She lost a child. I can't even Im imagine losing a child. And she lost a child. And she was able to walk through that with Bob, with the Lord through that tremendous pain. And she was blessed to have Carmen and Johnny around to encourage and support and help in her struggles, in her decline. And Bob and the faithfulness of their marriage. But right now, we need to hold on to each other, support and encourage each other, comfort each other, and seek the promise of the Holy Spirit that comforted Susan to help us and strengthen us and guide us in the days ahead so that we remain strong in the Lord and one day we will see Susan again and see our Lord face to face. That's why we're gathered here. So we remember Susan. We remember the promises of God and Jesus Christ. And in that vein, I'd like to invite you following the service down to the fellowship hall where a reception has been prepared for you and Susan's family can greet you. Let's bow in prayer. Lord God, I am so thankful for Susan, the blessing that she has been to my life, for the wonderful gift of her love and her friendship and her faith and faithfulness, so that I can say with confidence, I know when I see you, I will see her again. Lord, I thank you for her marriage, for her children. I thank you for the friends gathered here to support and encourage one another and to remember Susan. Lord, help us during this time to seek your comfort, your strength, your peace. Help us to hold on to those memories of Susan and how she blessed our life and the testimony of her life that she walked with you and now is with you. And help us to rest in that knowledge. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please turn in the pew rack in front of you the Book of Common Prayer, the one with the cross on the front. 
to page 252. This is the faith of the apostles, the faith that we find in Christ, the faith that Susan lived in and trusted. Please stand and let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. I invite you now to either kneel or be seated as we continue with prayer. Let us pray together in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you, after I say, Lord, in your mercy, to respond with, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant, we pray, to your whole church in heaven and on earth, your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, that, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you in faithful obedience. Lord, in your mercy, grant to all who mourn, especially Bob, Carmen, Johnny, Moira, for all family and friends gathered here, a sure confidence in your fatherly care, that casting all our grief on you, we may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, grant us grace to entrust Susan to your never-failing love, Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor which you show to all your people. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant us, with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, the fullness of life in your eternal and everlasting glory, and with all your saints to receive the crown of life promised to all who share in the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Something we all seek is peace, especially during a time like this, so let us offer one another a sign of peace. Please bow with me in prayer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Susan. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. You'll find in your bulletin the words to joyful, joyful, we adore thee, a wonderful hymn that Susan loved. Let us sing this together.
On behalf of Susan's family, I'd like to thank you for your presence and your prayers, and they would love to receive you down in the fellowship hall uh, where there's a reception prepared for you, but also an opportunity to greet them. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.